All right, guys. So you have no idea <laughs> what I've been through. And this is in the past, before I've been through any of this. But by the time you see this, I would have been through all of this. To get this video out at the right time, <laughs> while also making this not the 700th video on the channel, making it another one that I plan on it being. It, it's 2 in the morning. I need this out by 6 a.m. <laughs> so, The Omen from 1976, directed by Richard Donner, and starring Gregory Peck, Lee Remick, David Warner. If this all worked out, <laughs> it should be June 6th, premiering at 6 a.m. on the dot. 666. I've been having this plan since last year. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, this all works out. If not, this is a massive failure. Now, now this, this is, a is a film that is, of course, another horror masterpiece and just absolute classic. Leviathan of horror, if you will. Like Psycho, The Shining, The Exorcist, Halloween, The Thing. But this is one that you don't hear about as much. You don't hear about the omen. Like, for some reason, you don't hear the omen brought up when you hear all those other films being talked about as, like, the greatest horror films. And I don't know why. I, I really don't understand. Because Richard Donner's film here is so excellent. The score is so good. It made my honorable mentions of the my top 10 film scores, which was on my original list last year when I did that with Al Card, Got bumped off, but phenomenal. It, it feels so gothic. It sounds so gothic. It sounds like satanic rituals are, are going on all around you. And like that woodland critters are, are fucking each other in their own blood. That's the images you get when you hear the choir, or the gothic choir that kicks in for the score in this film. The score is just impeccable. The kid who plays Damien, I forget, I always forget this kid's name. One of the best child performances in a film for me. Like, he genuinely looks so creepy in this movie. And in certain shots, particularly. But he looks just straight up evil. And there's one flaw... I have with this film, and I'll get into it, but this, you would have to change something in order for it to work the way I would want it to work, like the way I would wish this film would have went, but it's, it's a thing, it, we'll, get to, we'll get to it, but let's talk The Omen from 1976, another absolute classic of horror, so 666. If I succeeded, just the opening credits with the, the music and all all the uh, cast members and crew and stuff like that, title cards and everything, just one still image of the silhouette of Damien, of a kid, and his shadow is a crucifix. So simple, so effective. Now, this is one of two films that are, you can be you know, you can consider religious horror films that still resonate with me and affect me just because I'm not a religious person. I don't, I'm, if anything, I consider myself agnostic. I don't really believe in anything. But I was raised Catholic. And I saw The Omen and the other film, The Exorcist, very young. So just having that, all that brainwash shit in my head, what, in my opinion, you know, believe whatever you want. As a young child, and seeing those, these two films, you know, this film and The Exorcist, still sticks with me. Like, you know, how things you grow up with, you outgrow with stuff like that, but then you still have that memory and attachment to it. That's how it is with this film for me. Like, it, it, it's genuinely creepy. And this is the flaw with this movie for me. 
We have Gregory Peck here. I, I never remember his, his character here. He's like the ambassador of Britain or, or somewhere. Like, I haven't seen this in a while. But he ends up getting his kid, Damien. But it's not his real kid. It's not his biological son. There was a mix-up at the hospital. His son died. And then they buried his kid. He finds later the, the remains of his kid. But so Damien is not his his actual son. Now later on in the movie, as we know, spoilers obviously, like in every video, we find out that this kid, Damien, is actually the Antichrist. Like there's no denying it. He has the six 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 thing behind you know on his hair and the back of his head. He is the Antichrist. There is no doubt about it. And. Gregory Beck has to make the decision to kill his son. As disturbing as that is, I feel like it's a misstep that they took. Yeah, killing a kid it just by itself is terrible. Like if unless you have fun with it, but for the most part, not good, right? So, what I feel like they should have done. And again, this is when I said earlier that you would have to change something here. I feel like they should have found a way to make Damien Gregory Peck's biological son. Like, have Damien be his blood son. Then he would have to make the decision to kill his actual biological son, his flesh and blood, after finding out and confirming that he's the antichrist maybe have the mother that gave birth like was was possessed or like it was something like that it was into witchcraft or something she gave birth to damien the antichrist and he was the father though he fucked this crazy woman i don't know but like they could have figured something out and then just have damien be his actual son because that it would be so much i'm not saying it's easy like, I already said that shit. That's off the table. You can't hold me to being a terrible person. But I feel like if it was his actual son, his blood, his flesh and blood son, it would have been such a harder decision. Like, you would need all the proof in the world. Like, what would be enough proof for you? Like, what would be the thing that makes you finally say... Holy shit, like, my my kid actually is the Antichrist. Like, he's actually evil, and I have to kill him. My own son. That would have been so much better for me for this movie. I get it. I get that the whole story that they wrote and stuff like that, and it's not his actual son, and it makes sense with where he supposedly came from. I get it. And it's still great. I just feel like that would have been so much better for me. And such a... Just ups the stakes a lot more. Like a moral dilemma to the hundredth power. Like, just thinking about possibly, like, having to murder your child. Oh, that kills me just thinking about having to do that. And Lee Remick is fantastic in this like, I absolutely love her. What a beautiful woman. What a, just a sweet woman. Like, I, I love Lee Remick in this whole movie. And, man, it sucks what happens to her. It really sucks. And Damien. Just, can we agree that the name Damien, the best name choice ever for the Antichrist? Like, anybody who hears the name Damien immediately thinks of the devil <laughs> thinks of this movie thinks of the antichrist at least i know i do anytime i hear the name damien or meet a damien the first mental image is the woman the nanny hanging at his birthday party every time i meet a damien like what a great name for the son of the devil quick random tangent uh keith gorfob i i just saw your message your pop up um, while I'm recording this. That's awesome, man. I'm glad to hear that people uh, like the stream. Like that's what I'm saying. We got to do something like weekly. We got to like talk to Sean. And we got to finally do that Italian horror thing, or 
let's do a slasher thing or whatever. Like, we got to do something. We got to do like a weekly show or something. Just his little suit, Damien, is iconic. Like his his, his like tan suit with the stripes. Like it, it's so iconic, man. And his haircut and the dogs in this movie. Oh, I got a story for you. In a little bit, when that scene comes, I got, I got, I got a life story that's that'll that'll shake you up. Now I mentioned this scene in my video of Suspiria, my uh, what makes this scene perfect on Suspiria about the best hangings in horror, like the best hanging deaths. Suspiria is probably number one for me. I think I said it in the video. This is right under it. Just at the birthday party, all the kids there, like it's so cheery and everything, but it's so ominous too. There's an ominous mood here. You know something's going to go wrong. And then you see the, the nanny or whatever just standing on the ledge and just says, and the way that her body just drops and like hangs and then swings back through the glass window is fantastic like one of like i said like top two hangings in a horror film it, it's so effective the reaction from everybody from david warner's character the photographer from the parents Gregory Peck and Lou Ramek, from the kids, from the kids' parents, everyone else there, the reactions are just perfect. And what a disturbing scene. And then Damien's, his little stare when he's staring at the dog, excellent. Like, this kid looks so creepy. So creepy in this movie. Like, what a friggin' performance, man. And this is one of those, I'm, I think I mentioned this once, in a video, I forget what, but whether this is actually how this kid was, or this is really just a phenomenal performance from such a young child. Either way, it, it lightning in a bottle, <laughs> like it, it worked perfectly. I don't know if this kid is just really just creepy in general. <laughs> And, like, this is just him being his normal self and maybe, like, just acting a little bit. Or if this is just one of the greatest performances ever. But either way, just fantastic character. Let me tell you something. Titanic came out in, what, 99, 97, 98, something like that, late 90s. This came out in 76. Do you know how many times... I've seen this movie and how many times I saw Titanic over the years and never put two and two together that it's David Warner in both movies. <laughs> it took years, years after Titanic came out where I finally rewatched this at some point and said, is that David? Is that the guy from Titanic, the old guy, the bodyguard of the douchebag that Billy Zane plays? And it was. And <laughs> it took me way too long. It, I'm usually good with picking out voices and actors, like in anything. Th that eluded me. It's almost like another example in Insidious. I, it took me, like, multiple watches before I realized that Lee Winnell played Stretch. Or S Stretch. <laughs> I'm thinking of Texas Chainsaw too. Specs. I had no idea that was Lee Winnell. No idea. The first, like, two or three times I saw Insidious. Didn't know. I'm pretty sure I found out when I covered it early on in the channel. Like, I think I mentioned in that video, like, I never knew that. That's when I found out, like, a year ago. Then we have the crazy priest who comes into uh, Mr. Thorne's office and starts telling him that Basically, his son is killing. He, that he killed the daddy, and he killed once. He's going to kill again. He's basically telling him that your son is the fucking devil, and is the antichrist. And what if? What are you going to do? Of course, you're throwing this guy out. Like, there's no one believing this. And the fact that <laughs> the fact that Thorn at the end of this movie actually goes ahead and almost kills Damien. 
I would still need more proof. I still would. Like, that's not enough. Like, let's, we'll talk about the proof as the movie goes on, but there's no way that I would, that I would be able to do that. And again, that's like, and I get, I know it's, I'm making it sound like an adopted child or like child is not yours, but it, it is, is different than a biological kid. I'm not saying that. I am, I guess, but <laughs> I don't mean it that way. It's just different in a way. I, it's, it's hard to describe, but just the fact that it's not his biological one, it's disturbing enough. If they would have went my direction, it would have been even worse. But they, they would, I would need so much more evidence. So let's start counting up all the evidence against Damien being the Antichrist here. And the mood of this movie, the atmosphere is fantastic. Like The tension is great in certain scenes. The, the ominous feeling throughout the whole film, the, like I mentioned earlier with the score, how that much that adds to this. This is another one of those films like Candyman and Cannibal Holocaust and um, several others that the score adds so much and elevates the film a lot higher than it would be without the score that it has. And just the score throughout this movie is fantastic. It's it's so eerie. It's so religious-y. <laughs> is that a word? Fuck it. Now it is. Religious-y. It's so gothic. And, and it it reflects in the, the whole atmosphere of this film. And the mood and everything. It's, it's so well done. And that's why it's a, it's a shame to me that this film isn't brought up and talked about in the same realm, in the same level as all the films I mentioned earlier. The, the Thing, ha- Halloween, all of those, The Shining, etc., 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 etc. It really should be. Like, there's no reason that this film should be thought of as a, as a lesser film than those. Like, this is an absolute masterpiece of a film. The directing is fantastic. The editing is fantastic. The sound design, I've already talked about the music and everything, is excellent. The the performances are fantastic. The story is great. Everything in this movie is excellent. It should be talked about so much more. And then we meet Mrs. Baylock, who is trying to come in and interview for the nanny position because the other one had to hang herself and, and, and murder herself. So we find out, of course, later that Mrs. Baylock is a follower of Damien. And let me say this, too. Not only is this film underrated and not talked about as much, but the whole Omen trilogy is fantastic. Which, I guess those gotta come now, right? <laughs> gotta watch those after this. But Omen 2 is, is fantastic, and Omen 3 with Sam Neill is fantastic, too. For the fourth one's not good. <laughs> like, I only saw it once. I don't remember being good at all. So, that'll be interesting. But the first three are fantastic. It's, it's such a great horror trilogy. And that's not talked about either. And, again... Goddamn shame. Note to self also. Like, this woman, Mrs. Baylock, she acts and looks so creepy from the get-go here. Like, she looks like an evil cult member. And they just, they don't pick up on any weird vibes from her. Like, they think she's totally fine. Are you serious? Come on, man. There's no way that, that they, there's no red flags for them with this woman. Like, she looks like an evil cult member. She looks like an evil (laughs) devil worshiper. And she acts so strange. She disobeys orders. Like, get the hell out of here. I love the shot of uh, Lee Remick coming down their gorgeous white staircase. Small little thing, but I I love that shot so much. Robert. Kathy. That's Gregory Peck and... uh, Lee Remick's character's names. Just, just, uh, just got him. Again, man, Damien, the kid's performance, like, when they're driving to the church, and, and 
his, his he has a hat on and he's giving this death stare. He, it looks so real. It looks so evil. Like this kid is so fantastic in this movie. And then he starts freaking out, and uh, Kathy says, "Come here, like it's just a church and stuff." And he starts having a fit. He won't get out of the car. He's tearing her hair and everything. But the way that it's shot is brilliant, man. It's very, it's very Stanley Kubrick to me. Like the way that w- when the choir's kicking in, the Latin choir, and you get like a pan and shot on Damien, and then you get a pan and shot on, on the religious statue on the top of the church. Like it feels very shining. It feels very Kubrick to me. Or I should say, the shining feels very omen to me because this came out first. So then Mrs. Baylock get the dog, the vicious dog that we saw earlier, and Damien gave the hello, to, the wave to, and the stare, that's just so creepy, and Robert sees the dog in his house, which, first of all, yo, if I was in my house, and I came downstairs, and I saw this weird-ass nanny that no red flags were, were raised at all for me, but for me they would be, and she has this vicious dog in my house, without my permission, she just brings this thing in here. She fired immediately. Fired. <laughs> Goodbye. Get out. Like, right now. Like, I'll call the cab for you. Are you serious? Like, now, this is JT story time. <laughs> I've never told this story in a public forum <laughs> of any kind. There are maybe a few people on the planet who have ever heard this story. Now, I love dogs. I did. Until I was attacked by one. Now, (laughs) okay, how's the best way to say this? So, maybe about ten years ago, I was going to a friend's house with an ex, my my girlfriend at the time, an ex- and I haven't seen the friend in a while. And he called me while I was en route to get there, telling me to pick up um, a 24-ounce bottle of Heineken for him from the gas station because I told him I was stopping for cigarettes. So I said, all right. So I grabbed the Heineken. Then get to the house. And I park in the driveway. And he said, come around the back. Now, I forgot that this guy had a... It's either a pit bull or a Rottweiler. I'm not good with dogs. It's it's one of these vicious-ass dogs with lockjaw. Apparently, he left him outside all day. It was a very hot day. I was going around back, and this dog runs right at me. And like lunges and bites me right on my inner thigh like so close to my dick (laughs) like so scary and I used to wear I I can't tell I'm very hippie-ish but (laughs) I used to go to a lot of hippie festivals and stuff but I used to wear like those like patchwork like pants like patch pants and stuff like that they're thick and my wallet was also in there and that's where he bit he wouldn't let go. And I really, I thought I was going to die. Like, I straight up, that was the one time in my life I thought I, was, I might die. Because he brought me to the ground. He was not letting go. For like, it, was, it felt like an eternity. <laughs> but it was only maybe like 15, 20 seconds. But he, like, he was, I'm trying to get him off me. And uh, he brings me to my knees while he's holding on. I'm thinking he's going to rip my throat out. So I take the Heineken bottle and I smash him in the head with it. Yo, yo, yo. I had to. Like, come on, what else was I going to do? I smashed this bottle in his head. It didn't break, but he let the hell go, I'll tell you that. And he ran away. (laughs) 
<laughs> my friend came out. He's like, what the hell happened? And I told him, I said, yo, you're a dog. And my whole pants, were, my shorts were shredded. Freaking my boxers, I mean, shredded, like everything. Like I had to get, I didn't need stitches. But I got like butterfly stitches and shit because it wasn't deep because, again, thick material. I, I, I won't go near a big dog <laughs> ever since. Like, no, 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 no. And that's why the the scene in this movie a little later with the dogs, it's so it's so much more effective for me now. This has been story time with JT. I love the way speaking of the dogs, the way that the all the animals react to Damien. They all detect the evil in him, and when they go on the safari with the baboons, and baboons are vicious creatures, man. Like that's why if you've ever been to a safari, I've been to a few. They'll tell you. They say, make sure you do not feed them. You do not open your windows. Nothing. Why? Because they will attack you. And they capture that perfectly in this scene. This is such a great scene. More crazy music and the choir music and just the way that they're all reacting to him. And they can feel that he's the Antichrist. Excellent. Like, so well, so well filmed. It's great. All right. Another excellent scene, man. When... Again, the choir music kicking in, and this is after we see uh, David Warner develop the photographs of the the crazy priest. And then he, I like this too in this movie. I like the photographs show like hints. I actually, now that I think about it, when recently I was talking about Final Destination on a stream, and said that I've never seen an idea like that. The third Final Destination does the same thing in the pictures, so I guess. Uh, it's not the same exact idea, but the little hints and pre not premonitions, but like the little hints in the photographs. So we see like the streak coming down on the guy. And then the way this whole scene is shot, man, and with the music, with the cinematography, with the lightning coming down and the atmosphere is so off the rails. It, it, it feels so just evil. Like, it feels like you're in the presence of evil. And then the thing, the pole falls off the top of the church and impales the priest and while he's standing up. What a great scene that is. Like, just so much a great atmosphere in this film. Another thing that's terrifying in this film is the fact that Kathy reaches the point that her own child terrifies her. And that is a scary thought. The thought that your kid, who you should love more than anyone in the world, and that they love you more than anything in the world, that you can't be in the same room with them, that you can't be around them, that you start to detest them, that you, that you start to get sickened by your child. That is so scary. What a terrifying thought. <laughs> what, and it's, 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 it's so well utilized here. Like, we see such a great portrayal of, the, of, of Kathy here. Lee Remick does such a great job in this film of just being, just she looks terrified. Like, she does not want to have any more children. And she wants an abortion and she drops the bomb on him real subtle here like i mean she really just drops on him out of nowhere says like i'm, I'm pregnant and so now she's pregnant again she don't want to have it and now he doesn't know what to do he he don't he's he's opposing this at first i love all the dialogue between her psychiatrist and and robert and he starts telling him like what she's been saying that she thinks that her child Damien is evil and that like th that she doesn't want any more children because she's like because of this and all of that like it the dialogue is great and the performances are great the psychiatrist he gives a great great performance to Damien is pre Danny Torrance tri uh, tricycling around so it's another thing that maybe Kubrick was inspired by.
And then what another disturbing scene here, man, like when Kathy's uh, putting the fish bowl and she's reaching for the plants and stuff and Damien's riding in circles and Mrs. Bailey is just looking creepy as shit like always and hasn't been fired yet like because of the dog thing either, none of that. And she, he ends up just bumping into Kathy and she falls from the balcony, it's not a balcony, but like the second floor, falls into the living room or whatever, and he gets put in the hospital. Like, oh man, again, the way it's filmed, it, it, it's filmed so well. And she's saying like, Damien, help, Damien, help, and he's just looking at her, and then she just, she can't hold on any longer, this woman's never done a pull up, like, come on, like, she falls real fast. This is when he finds out, while well, she's in the hospital, when Robert gets there, that she lost the baby, that she's no longer pregnant. So it's heartbreaking, man. I mean, he, he didn't, he seemed like he was totally for this. Like, he seemed totally against her wanting the abortion. And there's some touchy stuff here. For this. this is 76. There's some taboo stuff in here that you wouldn't expect, like, from 76. Speaking of the name Robert coming up so often, 20 minutes into the film when I finally got his name again. <laughs> but since it keeps coming up, Robert the Doll, that true, the true case. There's movies on that. That's the Robert the Doll series. I don't know why I just thought of that, but maybe those are some films that I do. Those are actually they're not as bad as you would think they, they would be. They're actually pretty entertaining. At least one or two of them. There's, there are some terrible ones. This has nothing to do with the movie. And God, man, I mean, their their whole house just looks gorgeous. But I mean, he's the ambassador. He ain't living in a goddamn trailer park. Keith Jennings, that's David Warner's character. He gets the call from Keith Jennings and ends up going over to his flat. And he ends up showing him more photographs and shows him one of the nanny from the birthday party. And there's a line in the picture and looks like the noose around her neck, the rope. And then shows the one of the priest and it shows the line that looks like the rod going through him. So this is all the, this is the evidence we have so far. Two deaths that could be accidents and one person who was injured, the mom who's now in the hospital. And two photographs that have some aberrations on them are like lines and shit that look coincidentally like the way they died. It's not enough to make for me to kill a kid. <laughs> like, I'll tell you that. So the two of them go to the crazy priest who died's place. And he's got thousands, the room is covered in thousands of pages of the Bible. There's 47 crucifixes. And, and we hear the number 666 for the first time, the birthmark. All great stuff, great dialogue, creepy scenes, like great set, like everything looks fantastic. Then we get the whole kind of origin theory of where, I guess, Damien or how he was conceived or something. That five years ago, on Damien's five, there was a, a comet sighted that turned into what looked like the Star of David from 2,000 years ago, and it was on the 6th of June. Happy June 6th, everybody. And he asks, was your, bo your son born at 6 a.m.? God, I hope the timing worked out. <laughs> and then I love the, their exchange of dialogue when um, Keith says to Robert, and um, I'd like to try to help you figure out whose son you're raising, because he said, I don't know whose son I'm raising. And he says, I'd like to help you. And he says, no, it's my problem. And he says, actually, it's mine too. And he says he was taking pictures and he took a picture of himself in the mirror. And you see the line going through his head, which, of course, is amazing decapitation later on. So they go to Liz Hospital and there's a Spanish nun. And she's saying that there's never been an adoption there. And he's saying, like, no, there was, but it wasn't, like, an actual adoption. And they don't really get anything, really, because there was a big fire, and all the paperwork and files and everything was destroyed. So they have a pretty much of a dead end there. But then he's told that there was somebody who lived through the fire, and that's their next lead. The whole 
uh, usage of the poem of uh, when the Jews return to Zion, excellent. Like what? That's iconic in this film. So he's theorizing Jennings to Robert that there has been a comet. The Jews have returned to Zion, and then they, he says that you know people have theorized that the Treaty of Rome, like politics and stuff, would be the third event to bring along the Antichrist. And the Jews going to Zion, I mean, man, they, they already killed Christ. I mean, do they really have to bring across the Antichrist too? I love that exterior shot of the church that they go to. What a beautiful shot. What great cinematography. And the priest or monk or whatever the hell he is looks great. Like the effect on him, he looks all messed up. And he's supposed to know the mother of, of Damien. And as he's writing, because he took a vow of silence, the, the bell tolling, what a great touch, man. That sounds so great. So the, the fucked up in the face guy writes down <laughs> uh, Chivette, or Chivetti is what the Italian dude says. And it's, uh, you'll find it on an old map, and it's north of Rome. And it's a cemetery. And that's when they head off, and we get that just... Oh, it's such a great scene. This whole scene in the cemetery is so atmospheric. The tension is so thick here that you can cut it just with a knife. It's, it's so amazingly done. Everything about it. Uh, then when the dogs appear and the, the way that they're looking at them, like they're ready to, to just attack and then the choir kicks in the Latin choir and then they start getting attacked by the dogs. Just, the whole scene is, is, is perfect. Just what an excellent scene. One of the best in the movie. And the, uh, the dog remains, the dog skeleton in his, what he thought was where his son was buried. Looks too. Uh, looks too. Looks cool. But then he goes to the next one, and oh, well, it's disturbing, man. We see this, the skeleton of an, of an infant, of a newborn infant, and it's his son. And he's saying they murdered him, like, as soon as he was born. Oh, that, that's heartbreaking. Oh, what a great scene, man, this too. And then... Kathy gets a phone call from in the hospital from Robert, and he's saying, please get out of there. Like, get out of the hospital. And she starts getting dressed, and someone's there. When she's putting the thing over her, and she, she uh, just talked to Robert, Robert said she's going to get picked up, and Miss Baylock comes. And the choir, and we get a, a very fulchy, like, zoom in on, on the eyes on Kathy. Uh, then we just see outside the ambulance, and then she comes crashing out the window and falls to her death right through the ambulance top into the ambulance. And then you just see her corpse there and stuff. Oh, that's a disturbing scene, man. And just, again, the choir, it, it adds so much to it. So then they go to this old crazy dude. Well, I mean, he's not crazy, he's right, but, like, he's fucking crazy, come on. And great dialogue, too, throughout all of that. And him saying that, like, he, for sure, his son, Damien, is the Antichrist. He bears a birthmark, a series of sixes, just like all the apostles of Satan, and all of that. And gives him the, the, the dagger and stuff, and says, you gotta kill him. Like, and then he, he's like, there's no way. And then Jennings is, is bugging him and saying, like, what did he tell you? And he tells him that he ends up throwing this friggin' knife away. He said, I can't do it. And then we get this amazing kill with Jennings. He goes to grab the knife, says, like, he'll do it himself. And the truck starts backing up and rolling down the hill. And there's a plate glass on it and it comes and it flies off and it decapitates him and his head spins in the air and then it crashes the plate glass goes right through the store window it looks fantastic i mean yeah the head looks real fake and stuff or whatever for 76 this looks great like what a great kill i love near the end here i love the lighting when robber comes home and he locks the dog in the cellar or whatever, wherever and he walks in slowly into Damien's room and he cuts his hair and you see the birthmark 666 
what a great scene. The lighting is so good in this. Uh, then crazy Mrs. Baylock shows up and attacks Robert in a little struggle fight sequence. Uh, then he takes the two prong kitchen implement, whatever the hell it is, and just right through her neck and she falls over dead and stuff. Looks cool. Again, for 76. The effects aren't bad in this movie at all. Now, we've reached the end. He's in the church and he's ready to stab Damien to death with the, the crazy dagger that was given to him by the old dude. And he's uh, heartbreakingly. I mean, how do you do this, man? Like, no matter what. But he's screaming, no, please, daddy, no. Like, coming from your kid. Like, oh. Again, yeah, doesn't matter if it's your real kid or not. But whatever. So let's go through the proof. So, that we have here. Yeah, you've had the, your nanny hung herself. Your wife was pushed by accident. In most people's eyes, easily an accident, and ended up in the hospital. You had a crazy priest get killed and impaled by a church. So far, that ain't enough for me. <laughs> to try to kill my kid? No, not enough for me at all. Then, we have the photographs that show pretty much similar ways that these people died with, that, with crazy lines and weird marks on the, on the uh, images. Then we have an old dude who says that, without even meeting him, Damien, just says, yep, 100% this kid's the Antichrist. Here's this magical dagger, and he, he, has, a, he has a 666 mark, uh, birthmark on him. All right, it's getting a little more compelling. It's getting a little more believable. Still not enough to murder my child. And then what else do we get? Your wife is killed. That's tragic. It wasn't Damien. It was the crazy bitch of a nanny that you hired with all the red flags that never went off for some reason that this bitch was insane. That was her. She killed your wife. So how do you know she's not killing all these other people? If anything, <laughs> if anything, I would think Mrs. Bailey or Baylock, whatever the hell her name is, I would think this woman is, is the Antichrist and kill her. I mean, she would have the, the, the birthmark, but whatever. <laughs> she's still worth murdering. She's, she's evil. She, she could explain away everything, really. Uh, then what else? You get attacked by dogs. Yeah, vicious dogs, they'll attack you. It happens. That's, that's common sense. And then you see the 666 mark, birthmark on your child. Again, that's very, very compelling evidence. All of that added up. That's, that's not kill my child worthy that's like a bad week for me like <laughs> that's not like not even anything too insane so i mean the whole fact that he even goes through with this is ridiculous and that's why i said it would be a lot more of a of a moral struggle and dilemma and stuff if it was his his birth child for some reason like i just feel like it would but there's no way that this guy would go through with this. There's, there is, that is nowhere near enough evidence for me. Like, by a long shot. And so the cops arrive, and right as he's about to kill, he says, God help me, and he's about to stab Damien. The cops say, drop or we'll shoot. And he goes to do it anyway, because to save humankind from the Antichrist. And he gets shot and killed. Sucks, man. He should have been quick at murdering this kid. What's wrong with him? I mean, he had plenty of evidence. And then we get his funeral with all the military and everything. I mean, he's the ambassador and everything. And all the white crosses are another iconic image from this movie. And then we get probably the most iconic thing from this film with Damien 
turning around, looking at the camera with the evil look, and then he just starts smiling very creepily. And what a classic. I'll tell you right now, it's 3.30 a.m. I ain't getting Ringu done. <laughs> So seven, it'll be seven days and, and one minute because they never get killed exactly on the exact time. Like even in, I don't know about Ringu, I haven't seen that in years, but in the Ring remake, she says it's like supposed to be 10 o'clock when she dies. That bitch lives for 10 minutes afterwards before Samara comes. So I don't know about Sadako, but it'll be 7.01 as long as this gets out at 6 a.m. Good morning, guys. Love you. Like, there's pretty some, there's some pretty tough. Uh, there's some taboo stuff in here. It's Damien, obviously, but you don't know that the first time you see this. And she has the thing she's putting over her, and she gets pushed and just by. Uh, and it's not Damien. What am I talking about? Again, da again, and damn, again, man, god damn. <laughs>